Hi there! Welcome to Palette University and the next video in our Real Biologist Reacts series reacting to the art of Joshua Dunlop, uh, who is an incredible, incredible uh, artist, who if you have not seen any vi uh, videos in this uh, series before, basically Joshua draws realistic, or at least more realistic than uh, they are depicted as normal Pokemon, um, but he draws Pokemon as if they were animals in the real world, and uh, in this series, I, a real biologist, react to them um, and teach you about biology by using these Pokemon um, as an example to sort of draw things on, point out uh, different things about their biology that either sort of makes sense or doesn't make sense. Um, and you all are kind of just along for the ride. So please go show Joshua all sorts of support in all of his social media links down below, his art station page here, um, his, uh, let's see, we've got his Twitter, his YouTube, his Instagram, um, all of which will be linked down below. Please, please, please go show him some support. While you're down there, make sure to leave a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you didn't like the video. And not that far away from those buttons is the subscribe button, which you should absolutely click as well. So today I'm not talking about like an evolutionary line like I normally do. Instead, I just picked a couple Pokemon that, um, for example, like Chansey. Chansey does have uh, an evolution and a pre-evolution, but the evolution is in Generation 2 and the pre-evolution is in, gener in Generation 4. And Joshua's just nearing the end of Generation 1. So like... It'll probably be a while before he gets to either Hepini or Blissey, so we're going to talk about Chansey in the meantime. Um, and as well as we're going to talk about Ditto. So I figured two pink blobs. Sure, they go together, I guess. Um, but anyway, Chansey. So, I wasn't sure what to think of Chansey. So I've always pretty much been um, pretty confident that Chansey and Blissey are mammals. Um, some people have kind of been like, oh, the things on Chansey's head are feathers. And the things around Blissey's, like, skirt type thing are, are feathers. And I'm like, no? Like, no. Like, they're just some kind of weird head ornamentation. Mammals are very well known for having weird head ornamentation. That's something that mammals are kind of well known for. Um, so there's just some kind of weird... They, they could be um, something to... Similar to, like, an, an African elephant's ears, where it just sort of waves them it'll flush them with blood and then sort of wave them to let off excess heat which it's a rather husky pokemon so i'm sure that it probably in warmer months gets relatively hot so that's what i could probably see those used for although having fur on them would make it less useful at doing that um but that's kind of what i what i see them used for so i would think that it's some kind of monotreme as well because they lay eggs although all pokemon lay eggs so i guess that's not really a good you know, excuse, but um, being that they carry around eggs, so I'd say at least some sort of marsupial um, because they have a pouch. But um, interestingly, so for all of the sort of pink blobby Pokemon in Generation 1 so far, so like Wigglytuff, Clefable, um, and now Chansey, he's sort of given the same face in that it's like vaguely rabbit-like. Um, and then the eyes... The, the pupils are too small for me to think that the eyes are very rabbit-like too. But, but just the whiskers, and then like the, the, the nose, and the way the mouth is just sort of generally structured, just looks like a wide rabbit face. Um, sort of rabbits, you know, generally have a rather narrow face. But Chansey is pretty thick. Uh, so uh, it just sort of takes the rabbit type face and just sort of flattens it. Um, Chansey itself is a very nondescript Pokemon. You know, unlike Blissey, Chansey doesn't really have a lot else going on with its body other than that it's just large, pink, has these feathery head things, has arms without really any fingers or, or claws or anything at the end of them. Um, I don't even think, and again, I, I don't have, like you see it on your screen, but I don't actually have Chansey's picture up in front of me. I don't think Chansey has something on its stomach i'm actually i am gonna pause and double check that actually before i say that yeah no it's literally just a, a mass of pink with the head feathery things little nub arms egg and then these sort vaguely rabbit like feet in that in chancy's art you can sort of see that it's got individual toes not super well though although these do look very much like rabbit feet although without the claws that rabbits do have on their back feet um, it's a lot fluffier 
than I kind of envisioned Chansey. I, like, obviously, I thought that Chansey, as, as I mentioned, was some kind of mammal type thing at least, so I figured it would have hair. But it looks way fluffier than I kind of imagined. Um, which I guess makes sense. So I'm curious to see how long the fur is. In, in like in Joshua's mind as he's drawing this so like how big is Chansey's body itself actually because um, with how sort of fluffy it looks it looks like its body is a fair bit smaller than what you actually see on the screen um, let's see so it does look like he shows some of Chansey's like actual skin not just um, the fur or hair um, around the pouch, which makes sense. Like, it probably wouldn't have um, hair inside the pouch. Most marsupials, some do, some don't. Um, like, for example, kangaroos sort of do. Um, although kangaroos are very weird for marsupials, so a better analog would be something like an opossum, um, which does have hair in its pouch to, that I'm, I, I think, anyway. Um, I don't know. I, at least on like the actual like belly side of the pouch they definitely do as for the actual like inside of like the actual pouch part so like if this is my pouch like the inside part here i don't know whether that has hair or not but apparently according to joshua it does not um let's see what else obviously joshua draws it in a hospital type setting um you can see like some sort of patient bed behind chancy there um looks like an oxygen tank right there some medical drawers. This looks very much like my dentist's office, to be honest. Oh no, that's not a bed, that's like a counter. Um, yeah, so he draws it apparently in like a Pokemon Center or some sort of hospital setting, which again, makes sense. Um, hmm, is there anything else I want to talk about with Chansey? Not really. Again, its eyes look creepy. Um, in that he makes the pupils very like human-like. And yet he doesn't ever give Pokemon the sclera or like the white part of your eye. He just doesn't give Pokemon that, which like, granted, the, having such a large sclera is a pretty, I don't even think that's like a primate thing. I think that's pretty much just a human thing. So like, I get it. Um, but having a human like eye without the sclera weirds me out for some reason. Um... Yeah, so let's see. I think that's kind of all I have for Chansey, to be honest. All right, so let's then move on to Ditto, who also freaks me the heck out, but like in a way that like I I understand, because like Ditto. So if if you that was loud, whoever's doing things outside. Um, if you remember me talking about uh, Ammonite and Amistar several weeks ago at this point, um, I mentioned how there's not, just not a lot to talk about with them, and I guess similar case with Chansey, because there's just not um a lot of detail you know with Ammonite and Amstar it's just like a shell some eyes and then non-distinct blue tentacles which can't see it's just pink blob head things egg and then with ditto it's even less descript in that ditto's actual art is literally just pink blob with a couple arms dot dot smile that's literally just ditto but with what joshua did makes it make way more sense because of the veins, which like are very unsettling to me, but also at the same time, I like that they're there because it actually makes Ditto seem like it's alive. Um, and what I actually really like that I'm noticing for the first time is that there's like a main nerve slash um, blood vessel that flows to each of like the arms. It looks like there's one for each of like the legs, or at least fl that flows down maybe to each of these like little lobes i don't think i see one going to like this lobe here um but there's definitely one here i think there's one maybe this one sort of goes back to there um but there's definitely ones at least like in the arms and then also to the eyes um it's tough to see with this one just because the angle it's at but like there's definitely some sort of nerve coming from this eye um so i would assume there's one here too which makes sense you know eyes are useless without the nerve that leads to i was gonna say the brain but i kind of really doubt that ditto has a brain it probably has something that's called a ganglion which is essentially what uh, a lot of invertebrates have which is just like a mass of nerves that functions 
similarly to like what your brain does in a vertebrate, um, that it's just sort of like the main hub of your nerves. Um, so I'd assume that just based on all of the stuff, I would think that the ganglion is somewhere sort of in the middle here. But again, that's really tough to say. Um, just because like this part of ditto is the thickest, so like less light is getting through. Um, so you can't really see. It does look like there's some kind of structure here though. So I'm really curious what that might be. Maybe that's just whatever's behind it being weird with lighting. Um, maybe, oh, that might actually be some sort of digestive tract because it sort of lines up with the mouth. Maybe that's what that is supposed to be. Um, cause I don't really see much else attached to the mouth. Like there is for the eyes. I don't really see much else attached to that. So I would say, yeah, that's probably what that is. Some sort of gut tract here. Um, which is really cool because, you know, I think the general consensus is, and again, this is a theory that sort of comes in and out of favor with a lot of people. It's something that I think makes sense. I haven't seen a lot of evidence like, un, like that's not supportive of it. Um, but with Ditto being failed Mew clones, um, or like failed clones of Mew to make Mewtwo. Um, I mean, they're both, I mean, it's like granted the evidence for them, for the, the series is not very good, but it's, they're both pink. They're both um, sort of blobby. I mean, I guess Mew's not really that blobby, um, but at least in generation one, the main place where you find Ditto is in the Pokemon mansion, which is where, um, you know, Mew was cloned into Mewtwo on Cinnabar Island. You can find them in other places, like you find them in on the route. I don't remember the which route number it is, but it's the route to the east of uh, Fuchsia City. You can find them there, and obviously you can find Ditto in many, many other regions where Mewtwo was not cloned. So that's some evidence, sort of against it. But um, also, their shinies are the same color, um, which is interesting. Although I kind of think that that's just a Gen One palette swap. Um, thing goes back uh i think pre-gen 4 they basically just did a palette swap instead of like custom designing um shiny pokemon so it's like okay ditto and mew are both the same color of pink we just palette swap that color of pink for blue shiny um that's pretty much what they did they're like okay this color corresponds to this new color for every pokemon so again that that is like a coding reason and not like an actual in-game lore reason uh, that sort of accounts for that. So I don't know how much I want to sort of provide credence to that, but oh well. Do I have anything else to say about Ditto? Not really. Um, although I do think it's really interesting. Is there one on this other arm too? Maybe, like right here. Um, but how there's sort of this end point. And it sort of reminds me a little bit of Reuniclus, which um, I would love to see Joshua's take on Reuniclus and that whole line. Um, but that's, you know, four generations from now. So I think it'll be quite a while before Joshua gets around to doing that, if, uh, if he gets around to it at all. But that's sort of what it reminds me of in that Sort of, this is like the, the vessel or maybe the nerves. Actually, it looks like all of these other ones are the vessels. Um, oh, it is kind of cool. That's, these ones right here are blue. And these ones right here are red. That implies to me that uh, Ditto has some sort of uh, respiratory system. Although based on it, it to me, kind of just looks like it can just exchange oxygen through its skin because these blood vessels are so close to the skin. And based on the shininess, it looks like it's wet, which is the two things that you need to exchange oxygen through uh, through your skin. So if that were true, it wouldn't it would need to have veins that are blue and arteries that are red. They would all just kind of be red, um, at least at the surface of the skin. Um, but it looks like this is sort of a rough equivalent to a bone in how Ditto moves. So like, what your muscles do is they basically have, um, think of it like strings attached to a bone and then to a muscle. So like to move your finger like this, 
there's, think of a string that's tied to the very tip of your finger. And then you sort of uh, pull on it. And because of, it's like fixed to the rest of your bones too, instead of just like being pulled, you know, your finger just being pulled straight through itself, it sort of has to curl in and out on itself um, to relieve some of that tension when you, when you pull on it. That's sort of what I think. So in order for muscles to work, it needs to have something to pull on. And that's what I think this thing probably is here. Again, that is pure conjecture. I have no idea. <laughs> um, we'd have no idea of anything in that of that's like inside Ditto. So this is just me literally just pure theorying. Um, this, like I said, it might be a nerve, like a cord of nerves. I kind of doubt that it's some kind of blood vessel because we see lots of other ones around it. So that might even just be some kind of weird um, thing of muscle. Um, Hmm. Yeah, this depiction of Ditto is super weird. Um, I'm more inclined to think that it's some kind of nerve, though, just because muscles don't tend to do that. Um, muscles are very good, with one exception. Your to tongues are very weird. The musculature of your tongue is very, very weird, especially in humans. Um, but every other muscle basically only moves one direction and then relaxes in that same direction. So, like, your bicep. So your bicep moves your forearm this way so by flexing it it brings your forelimb toward you and then by relaxing it it lets it fall away from you and then obviously there's another muscle you know your um tricep is this your tricep this one on the bottom here that is sort of a counter to your muscle so every muscle also has um i shouldn't say every most muscles the, the large majority of muscles have have a like counter muscle so like while flexing your bicep brings your arm up Flexing your tricep brings it back down, as well as just releasing your bicep. Um, so yeah, just having like a cord of muscle doesn't really work, doesn't really do anything. Um, so I'm more inclined to think that that is some, cord of, some sort of nerve cord. Um, yeah, anyway, really cool, albeit slightly disturbing, depiction of Ditto from Joshua. And I guess that's pretty much all I have for these two, so this is going to be a relatively shorter episode. Anyway, once again, thank you to Joshua for even allowing me to make this content based off of your art. You definitely don't have to do that. Um, so big shout out to you. So please, once again, go show Joshua all sorts of support. And speaking of that, you should follow me on Twitter at palette underscore you to keep up on all things Pokemon science, as well as if you feel like our content is worthy of supporting financially, we do have a Patreon. The link will be down in the description as well. Also, big, big, big shout out to uh, our supporter over on Patreon, Patty Murphy. Thank you so much. And I, just a, a forewarning, um, I'm bulking all of this content. So if you have since um, become a patron and your name is not on the screen, just know that I appreciate you too. But uh, I edited this like at, at, the, be at the beginning of December slash uh, late November. So if you have become a patron since then, just know that I love and appreciate you as well but your name is not on here. It will be as soon as I get back to making regular content um, back in like the beginning of January. Anywho, lastly, thank you so much for watching. And as always, there's a time and place for everything. <laughs>